Get muted there, Lance. Sorry, good day. <laughs> Welcome to the Chapel Hill Chauncey Hall School virtual open house. My name is Lance Conrad, the head of school, and I'm so excited that you are here to learn about our amazing school and meet the inspiring students, parents, and teachers that I get to work with every day. I'll take a quick second to introduce you to Chapel Hill Chauncey Hall School, or as we call it, CHCH. First, we have a long history, one that goes back 192 years. Our bucolic 42 acre campus here in Waltham is where Chapel Hill School for Girls began back in 1860. Meanwhile, in 1828, a all boys school, a finishing school in Boston named Chauncey Hall was founded. And then in 1971, these two schools emerged to form Chapel Hill Chauncey Hall right here on our Waltham campus, a co-ed school serving students from the greater Boston area and borders. CHCH is a day and boarding school for grades nine through 12, plus a few postgraduates. And usually about half of our students live here on campus, while a lot more um, than a little more than half of our other, other a little more than half of the other students um, will will travel to campus from about 30 local communities. CHCH is one of the most diverse independent schools in Massachusetts with students from literally all around the country and the world. As you just saw in that video, uh, COVID-19 has impacted the CHCH experience this year. For example, we are not currently running our boarding program, but hope to open our three dormitories later this spring. Pivoting, many of our boarding students have opted to take part in an innovative host family program, whereby living locally with other CHCH families. In all, today we have 80% of our students participating safely in instructed on campus in person classes, while about 20% of our students are remote learners engaged in synchronous classes virtually alongside our on campus learners. We are in constant communication with our families, both local and international to make sure that students are getting the academic, social, and supportive college prep environment that will allow them to thrive, even during these challenging times. Our motto at CHCH is we teach the way students learn. This means that our entire curriculum is designed to meet students where they are, to leverage their particular passions and aptitudes, and to teach engaging, differentiated lessons both in and out of the classroom, all to reach our goal of allowing students to achieve their full potential on their road to college. Again, I'm pleased you joined us today. You'll be hearing a lot more about our unique approaches to teaching and learning throughout this open house. Enjoy, meet, enjoy meeting our amazing community and make sure to reach out with any questions that you have. I look forward to connecting with you soon. And now I'd like to turn things over to our Director of Enrollment Management, Lisa Paul Ryan, who will be highlighting today's agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Lance. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lisa Pellrein, Director of Enrollment Management here at CHCH, beginning my 19th year. Uh, so I have a lot of experience um, engaging in many open houses. However, this is our very first virtual open house. And so we've had to, like many other schools and industries, had to pivot and think of new ways to engage with prospective families. And so with that, um, thank you for your patience um, as we explore the next two hours and any technical issues or pauses um, in advance, I'm just warning you. So hopefully everything runs smooth. I have an amazing team um, working with me to pull this off this afternoon. Um, and just a reminder that this open house will be recorded. And so if anybody um, could not join this afternoon, we'll be sending it out to all the families if a spouse or, or a child couldn't um, participate. So no worries there. Before I get into the agenda, I just wanted to point out on the bottom, there is a chat. Um, on the bottom of your screen. And so that's where I'll be collecting all your questions throughout um, the afternoon. And I'll be managing those to make sure we get to everybody's questions. We are moving quickly throughout a, a jam-packed agenda. So we'll do our best to get to everything. Um, but I'm always available to answer any questions that we may not get to. I'm just gonna do a quick screen share and we'll show you um, just to give you a visual as we walk through the agenda for this afternoon. Okay, so we just had our head of school welcome. Thank you, Lance. Um, after I'm finished going through this um, 
agenda, um, our assistant head of school and director of diversity, equity, and inclusion will be doing a presentation to give you an overview about um, the CHCH experience from an academic, social, emotional point of view. Following that, we're going to we have um, three amazing faculty that will be on a panel um, to do a Q and A. So, as Josh and Nikki are giving their presentation, feel free to start entering your questions in the Q and A, so I can begin to collect those and then um, have our faculty answer your questions. If you want to start thinking about options for a breakout room, we have three different options for you to engage in. Um, we'll have faculty in each of these breakout rooms, which include athletics, visual and performing arts and our amazing skills and academic support program. Again, this will be recorded. So if you have maybe two or all three options you'd like to see, um, don't worry because we'll be sending out the recording. So you'll hear everything that went on in each of the breakout rooms. Following that, we'll have a college counseling video. And then we have some of our current students and parents who will engage in a Q&A with you as well. So if you're wondering from a student perspective or a parent panel about their experience at CHCH, um, please feel free to start getting those questions um, you know, started as well. And then I'll be ending with uh, next steps. And then we'll be finishing with a virtual tour of campus led by one of our current students or you'll have the option um, to participate in a financial aid and scholarship um, session with our director of financial aid, Susie Horn. Many of you may have already done the campus tour. Um, so if you've already um, done one of those, you can feel free to stay or you can drop off at that point, but I'll, I'll be closing before that point as well. So that's the agenda for this afternoon. And again, thank you for spending your Sunday um, with us. And with that, I'm going to be turning things over to our assistant head of school, Josh Bubar. Thank you, Josh. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Josh Bubar. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Um, Nikki Turpin, who's our Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, is going to join me in a brief presentation where we talk a little bit about um, who we are as a school and use the using the acronym CORE to describe for you um, how we go about our day-to-day -day work with students. Um, I want to start real quickly with a little fast facts for those of you that maybe haven't dug as deeply into this. Um, we typically have around 180 students, um, an average class size of 10. 100% of our students are accepted to college, um, as is the norm in the, this day and age. Not all of our students go to college directly after Chapel Hill. Many of our students, some of our students will take a gap year to pursue a variety of other things. Um, we do offer honors and advanced courses. Typically 40% of our students are boarding. And we do have an athletic program that we'll talk about a little more later that is um, both really welcoming, but also pretty competitive, particularly in the recent past. Uh, so I want to talk to you a little bit about CORE and the acronym that we use to describe the work we do here with our students. And CORE stands for Curriculum, Opportunities, Relationships, and Empathy. And we think that these four elements really comprise uh, what makes up a CHCH education. When we talk about our curriculum, we're really talking about differentiated instruction. That's, as Lance noted, meeting our students where they are, helping them leverage their strengths, their gifts in pursuit of an academic curriculum. Um, as a college prep school, we know that our students will all have to prepare themselves for higher, um, higher education. And in that setting, there is not always the kind of support that they'll get in a smaller school such as Chapel Hill Chauncey Hall. So one of the really important pieces of our curriculum is teaching self-advocacy and self-understanding. A, core, a key element of our curriculum is our schedule. You'll see here that our classes are 75 minutes long and they meet three times a week. A block, for example, on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. D block on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And F block, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. We really like this 75 minute schedule because it gives our teachers time to dive deeply with students into their material. We really focus on depth over breadth in our curriculum. And it also allows our students to really provide multiple entry points into all of the work they do with students, whether it's skill development or content acquisition. We really offer students a number of different ways to connect to what we're doing in the classroom um, and to further their skills and understandings based on the way that they are best going to under demonstrate their knowledge and develop those core academic skills that they need to move on to college. Uh, I wanna show you a little video we have. Um, this is an example of a long-term project-based assignment we've done historically with our history department uh, and that 
that's really supported by the 75 minute classes and then ends up with an in-school field trip for uh, all of our juniors and the vast majority of our senior class. Um, this is our Senate simulation. to amend SR-12. Hi, I'm uh, Yemi Fail. I'm one of the history department uh, faculty here at Chapel Hill and I'm uh, participating in the Senate simulation today. In order to prepare students for uh, this simulation, um, we asked them to uh, put together profiles on actual members of the United States Senate um, that they were going to pretend to be. Um, after they put together their profiles, um, they were then asked to um, debate legislation that they actually created in real life. We are voting on different bills that have made up for themselves um, as senators, and we are kind of role playing the two party systems with the Democrats and Republicans, um, and trying to balance our morals with our party beliefs, um, and kind of seeing what actual real senators have to do on a daily basis. My beliefs are mostly Democratic, but I'm, I'm portraying a Republican candidate, and I have to really learn his learn um learn his beliefs and I have to really be that person for a day. So I think that's really challenging, but really fun as well. For the Jordanian government scandal and are in need of our assistance. How would you feel if you were stuck in such insecure places that have long periods of time? I love it. I love debating and to be honest, arguing sometimes about these issues. I think it's really important to gain a really thorough understanding of how our government works, how we understand how decisions are made, how laws are passed, how bills are passed. And this is helping everyone, I think, get a great understanding of that. The Senate, I move to amend SR 12 in a way to help solve another massive problem facing America, which is the opioid crisis. Is he going to just dismiss someone's views and be like, oh, well, I don't agree, so I'm not even going to spend time thinking about it? But it gives me a chance to think, like, why would someone think this and why would someone believe this, whether it be their upbringing or their state or their party or whatever? Like, there's a lot of contributors. Why can't we say air pollutants when we want to address climate change? It's a true thing. Air pollutants are true. They happen. I'm going to take away from this experience that uh, even in the Senate, which is something I think is so professional, that there's a lot of compromise and there's a lot of talking amongst the parties. And I thought it was very much black and white, but I've realized that there is work between the office, there's work between the parties and that um, people do need to come to compromises even in their adult life to get things done. Say nay. 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 The opinion is chair that nays have it. We're going to continue talking about supporting something. And now, Nikki, do you want to jump in a little bit and, and talk about the, the perspective taking piece? Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so as you can see from that video, students were really able to dig into the topic. And so our 75 minute classes really allow for every um, topic and course to be able to take a real hard look at some engaging topic conversations, um, as well as gives us a chance to show multiple points of view, um, as well as different narratives. So that allows us to really have a full picture, um, not just about curriculum, not just about one topic, but all of the topic viewpoints. Um, and so as you saw from this, this, this allowed students to really take time to engage with how would the Senate actually run? How could you be bipartisan? How do you have those conversations across the lines um, while being in their role? Um, and it wasn't for just 30 minutes, it was a full block of 75 minute time for them to be able to share and think about how um, their role would be if they were there. Right. Our next um, piece of our acronym is opportunities. And we're gonna talk about this in two different ways. I, I wanna talk a little bit about the opportunities that we offer um, students outside of the classroom. Uh, as a small school, again, with only 180 students, we have a really rich and diverse set of activities. Um, all of our students participate in a co-curricular activity all three trimesters. So once the academic day is done, all of our students will head off into a different group, whether that's to play an interscholastic sport, participate in our theater program, either on stage or as part of our theater tech crew, um, or participate in some more non-traditional activities, such as our on-campus rock climbing activity. We think it's really vital that students engage in things with their school peers that are not academic. 
we find that that can be some of the richest areas for growth for our students. And we really find that many of our students, surprisingly, even to themselves, step out of their comfort zone. The nice thing about our programs is while we have students who go on to be college athletes, who go on to major in theater at the college level and theater tech, and we have students who do all sorts of different things when they leave us, there's also room in all of our programs for students who really just wanna try something out. If you wanna be on the stage, there's a part in the play for you. If you wanna play soccer here at Chapel Hill, even after you dropped it when you were in third grade, there's a place for you here. And so we really think offer the best of both worlds um, for our student thespians, athletes, and others. The other place where opportunity comes to the forefront is in our college process. And I wanna let Nikki talk a little bit about that. Thank you. So as you can see this number 224 to 118, um, that number signifies how many students we have and how many schools they go to. And that's a really large number. Um, and why that number is so large is because our college counseling, um, Brooke, really does a great job of finding the proper school for that student. Um, you know, she's not going to suggest a school where a student is going to be struggling um, or setting them up for failure, for lack of a better word. Um, she's really finding schools that makes that makes that student feel like at home and that they're going to be successful. Um, so we don't want our students to leave and feel that they're overwhelmed or this isn't the right home for them. We want them to go off to a school where they feel like Chapel Hill prepared me to be in this space in this place. Um, and so that number is really great to look at and think about, you know, not just looking at us, but all the other schools that you might be looking at is to really to see how many diverse schools are offered to students for them to have the place that they will feel their best success can happen. I also think we really value relationships here. Um, as the assistant head of school, really everything that impacts a student's experience here at Chapel Hill um, is kind of under my umbrella. And what that means is that's under my umbrella as well as the hiring process. So all the faculty, um, I'm part of the hiring process. And I want you to just maybe just take five seconds and think to yourself, okay, if I was hiring high school faculty and I could look through resumes, what would be the one thing that I would look for that I would think is most important? All right, time's up. I don't know what your answer is but I can tell you what our answer is and what my answer is. The one thing that will make a resume float to the top of our pile, and we get hundreds of resumes for every opening that we have here, is experience outside of the classroom working with students, particularly summer camp experience, theater experience, coaching experience, because those are places where we find our faculty are really invested in and love working with adolescents. You know, you don't go up into the woods in Maine or New Hampshire or Vermont for eight weeks and live in a tiny little cabin with eight 14 year olds unless you love adolescents and you love kids and you love developing positive relationships with them. And so when we look for this trait in all of our faculty, what we find is that everything else follows from that. Their ability to develop great relationships with our students allows our students to trust them, to move forward, and to make the kind of gains in the classroom um, that we're all looking for. I have another little video to share with you. Um, it, it is an unbelievable example of kind of the lasting relationships we have with our students. Um, so I'll share this with you right now. Is it okay if we don't keep a letter? Do you need a light? Uh, I don't think so. How do you play with that formality a little bit? Put it back in the app and keep it. So your aspect in the classroom changed. My senior year of high school helping me write my essays and get in my college application and then actually getting helping to get me into college. It's Nora from class of 2016. I just wanted to say thank you so much for everything you did for me when I was at school and continuing afterwards. 
You were always there for me, and I really appreciate that. I'd like to say thank you to Mr. Castillo for always seeing the light in me. He always, he always knew who I was destined to like. Just be great. You taught me so much over my time at, at Chapel Hill, and you showed me what learning is all about, and you made school fun for me. And not only that, but you made learning a passion of mine. And I really value all of the care you put into your work because it makes me more inspired to uh, go forward and help others in the way that you helped your students. Um, and I'm really excited to return to Chapel Hill and say hi, finally, after months and months of promising to do so and see you and uh, just say thank you in person. <laughs> that is incredible. Well, thank you for doing it. <laughs> On a somewhat related note, empathy, I think, is what Lance likes to call our secret sauce here. When we reach back out to our parents and our alums and even talk to our current students, this is the word that comes up over and over and over again about the relationships that they feel with the adults in our community and with each other. And these are things that we really consciously try to develop um, with our students. Um, we do it through our community service initiatives, right? Where all of our students engage in community service in a more typical year, we engage in it both independently. We ask our students to do a certain number of hours every year, but also in our grade levels and sometimes with even smaller groups with some of our athletic teams, some of our advisories, um, because we think that that shared experience um, with each other and then within our commu local communities is incredibly valuable to building empathy. Um, we also try to build shared experience through our spring session program. Our spring session program is a program that takes place in the last week of the academic year in May. We often hold mini classes where we leave campus. This, for example, was the civil rights journey where uh, two of our faculty took a group of students down to Alabama to visit a number of uh, civil rights, important civil rights sites um, from our country's history. Um, but it can also take place on campus. Here, uh, here we have a group of students working together to make art together um, in one of our dormitories. And we just really find that this shared experience between and among our students with our faculty and staff, with our local communities is incredibly valuable to that perspective taking um, that we also try to engender in our academic program. Another place where we work on this is in our student life curriculum, which is our social emotional learning um, curriculum here at school. And I'll, I'll let Nikki talk about that a little bit. Great, thank you. So this being my first year, I was really, happy to see that there was time blocked out as we saw in the schedule before for us to really do social emotional learning on the level of students understanding the world around them and then also being able to share their world um, so the picture right here is from our recent um, day of the dead um, day and we had oz who is one of our um, students here at chch present about the day, day of the dead and what it means to her culturally but then we were also able to come together as a community and build our own ofrenda so we were able to also share people that we have lost um, with each other and come together as a community um, and this is just one of the many ways that i have seen um, us as staff as faculty and our students be able to really know and show an idea of windows and mirrors and windows and mirrors is just a, a way of saying that you show who you are you are being able to show as a mirror you'll be able to also be seen um, and so you're opening a door for others to come in and understand your culture and things that are important to you as well as be able to see yourself reflected um, and this is also in our curriculum as well we're really examining how do we make sure that every student feels that they are seen in the classes that they are in not just in terms of the teachers calling on them but also what we're reading what we're learning about what times and periods and eras are we looking at and examining um, which really helps to expand um, how students are able to know how they learn is also feel comfortable knowing to being able to say I learn and this is how I learn and this is how I see myself and want to present myself to my classmates.
And so this is a portrait of a graduate. And these are kind of our ideas of what a CHCH student will look like when they leave us, right? Um, and so it's this ability to communicate, right? Understanding how to communicate back and forth. And it's something part of our SAS class that we use to teach students how to communicate with their, you know, their teachers or to work on something that they're behind on. How do you, how do you communicate what you need? Um, which also allows this idea of being able to creative, right? So creativity, um, cultural fluency. And again, that goes back to our ability to have student activities and student life programs that really show other, other windows into other worlds um, and other cultures. Um, being understand your academic habits, which is how you're successful, right? I am not a morning person. I am much better at night. And so if you tell me that I have to do something at five o'clock, it's probably gonna be better than 8 a.m., right? So I can say that to, to, to people being of the age I am now. But when I was in high school, I wasn't very confident in telling my teachers, hey, I need an extension because I just couldn't get this done. It's not, it's not working for me. Um, so really also showing students how to best use their time and time management. Um, community engagement, we're starting right now our, our own community projects with philanthropy. So making sure our students understand why it's important to be engaged in your community, not just um, being there, but like actually putting yourself out into that world and, you know, helping others. Collaboration, um, we see our students being able to do group projects together and really take on, oh, I'm great at doing this part. How about you take this part and I'll do, you know, the written form and you do the actual slides and setting up because you're such a visually aware human being. Um, as well as also talking about how social justice minded our graduates are. Um, we just left, we had a class leave that really understood how important it is to speak up and not be silent when they're seeing um, forms of injustice happening. Um, and that's something that's really important um, for us as a society. And so we wanna make sure that we're sending out the best possible human being into the world that can help and actually make change happen. Um, and that they also understand that they're learning for the love of learning. And it's not just to re-give you know, re back to a teacher what the answer is, but to really engage in um, the topic and um, understand why it's important and then relate to it as well. So I, I hope this give, has given all of you a, a window into the work we do here at CHCH. And I would really encourage you as you go through your question and answer period today, as you have a chance with student and uh, parent panelists, with faculty, to think about the core of who we are, the curriculum, the opportunities, the relationships, the empathy that is present here. And really, I think what you're going to hear are variations on the same theme that Nikki and I were able to at least show you a little bit of today. Um, so again, thank you so much for joining us. Um, thanks for taking the time. I think you're going to really enjoy today and really come to know us much, much better. Um, so have a great day. Thank you, Josh and Nikki. All right, so I have um, three faculty joining us for the Q&A portion of this panel, and I'm just going to ask each of them to briefly introduce themselves and what they do here at CHCH, and I've taken note of everyone's questions, um, so we'll get to those in just a moment. Um, so Jenny, I'm going to ask you to go first, please. Sure. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Jenny Cook. I'm the chair of the science department. I've been at Chapel Hill for eight years now, um, teaching in both the science and skills and academic support departments. Um, I lived on campus for a number of years and I've been involved in coaching through our athletic program. So nice to see all of you and looking forward to hearing your questions. Thank you, Jenny. Um, next up is Christine. Oh, Christine, you're muted. <laughs> there you go. Can you hear me now? I can, thanks, Christine. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, everyone, I'm Christine O'Brien. I'm the chair of the World Languages Department. Um, so I teach levels two um, and advanced um, in Spanish. And I also live in Worcester Hall, which is a boys dorm. And I also am in charge of um, coordinating weekend activities for our boarders. Nice to meet you all. Thank you, Christine. And last but not least is Michael Spencer. Hi, I'm Michael Spencer. I am the chair of the English department. This is my 12th year at Chapel Hill Chauncey Hall School. Uh, I've been teaching uh, English 9 uh, for with freshmen every single year I've been here and also several uh, different uh, senior English courses as well. And I've also been uh, a member of the instructive faculty for our after school drama program. Wonderful. Thank you, Michael. Okay, the first question is for uh, Jenny. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the science curriculum and labs that you offer? And then um, second question that came in, I can also have you answer as well. Is there a computer science program and students um, to have the opportunity um, to really dig deep into that? 
Sure. Um, so we do what we call integrated science at Chapel Hill. Um, so for the first three years of our curriculum, rather than focusing on one um, particular science, we look at sort of the intersections between our different fields of science um, and really focus on building the skills of, of thinking as a scientist and collaboration. Um, so freshman year, physical science and engineering. Um, uh, sophomores and juniors go through a two year, we call it biochemistry, but topics in biology and chemistry program. And then seniors um, are able to choose a, a topic to focus on. So we offer advanced physics and chemistry, AP environmental science, astronomy, and then anatomy and physiology. Um, and then certainly there's room for students to pursue um, areas um, that they are interested in. We don't currently have a computer science program, um, but that would be something for a student to um, get in touch with a faculty member that they're close with and, and work on an independent study. Um, so I'm, I'm doing an independent study this year in AP chemistry for one of our students. Um, she went through all of our chemistry classes that we offered and, and wanted more. Um, so that was a way that she's pursuing that further um, past what our traditional curriculum offers. Um, and then just briefly, I would say that all of our classes are laboratory or investi investigatory classes. Um, we really focus on activities and getting the kids to, to do hands-on learning um, versus lecturing. Um, so my freshmen are about to start designing mousetrap cars. Um, mm -hmm. My sophomores next chapter are going to explore um, nuclear science. So we won't do too many nuclear labs, um, but we'll get them <laughs> in exploring and, and doing some hands-on activities there. Great, thank you, Jenny. Um, next question is for Christine, um, and I just got another question in that you can answer both of them. Um, do you offer Mandarin, and if not, is there an uh, independent study option, and do you offer French? So maybe if you want to talk a little bit more about our world language program and requirements. Sure. So our um, language department, we offer um, Spanish and French. We used to offer Mandarin, but we didn't have enough um, students um, signing up for Mandarin classes, so we actually recently um, got rid of the Mandarin program, which was really sad, but we still do offer Spanish and French. Um, both languages, we have um, classes being offered in levels one through um, advanced, which is um, levels four and five. And um, yes, we do also offer um, opportunities for students to pursue an independent study, whether that's in um, Spanish or French beyond the advanced level, or if they have any particular um, topics within the um, linguistic skills that they want to further explore, we um, offer them the opportunity to do so. And we have also had our students um, do American Sign Language, Italian, Russian, independent study. So we definitely do offer um, a variety, variety of options to fit um, the students' needs and interests. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Christine. Um, next question um, was related to the faculty training and our, our, you know, our motto, we teach the way students learn. And so how do we provide this training for our faculty um, and how is it part of our, our program? Josh, I don't know if you want to, is Josh still here? Josh might have dropped off. Yep. Oh, there you are. Sorry. No, no, no I'm here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, I'm here. Um, yeah, absolutely. So we do provide um, a week-long new faculty training. Um, every year. So anybody that we're bringing in as new faculty, uh, they're getting a week with us uh, before we even then have our pre-sessionals with our returning faculty to really dive into kind of what that means for us. And so we talk a lot about multiple intelligences theory um, and then how that applies into the classroom. We talk about understanding by design, which is this idea of back planning backwards, planning with the ends in mind. We really look at our portrait of a graduate and really consider how in different disciplines, uh, those different domains will be, students will create evidence um, of mastery in those different domains. So there, we do a lot of work with our new teachers. I will say, this is another piece, in addition to really liking teachers who have camp experience, have a lot of, uh, you know, outside of the classroom experience with adolescents, we're also looking for teachers who have some understandings of these core concepts, who are interested in teaching at a school that is not test driven, that really embraces a wide variety of assessments, that understands that it's not how smart you are, but it's how you are smart, and really wants to work with kids who have a, you know, a really diverse set of profiles and learning styles um, and ways that they approach school best. Great, thank you, Josh. 
Um, next question has to do with uh, just helping new students acclimate to the CHCH community and forming friendships. And I will say, while we typically keep our ninth grade um, smaller by design to help students transition in from middle school to high school, that grade is usually mid 30s. We do often add 10 to 15 new sophomores, um, six to eight new juniors each year. So it's not just at the freshman level that we have to do some form of orientation and help new students um, matriculate in. I know we have a few of our grade level deans um, here, and I know you weren't formally part of this panel, but wondering if maybe Casey, and uh, who's our ninth grade dean, and Jackie, who's our sophomore dean, if you want to just talk a little bit um, about your approach at the beginning of the year. Um, each grade level has a dean, and then their team of faculty that primar primarily teach that grade level. And that's where advisors um, are chosen and, and such. And so, um, so I'll turn it over to Casey and, and Jackie, maybe to talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so hi, I'm Casey. I'm the ninth grade class dean. Um, one of the things that we do at the beginning is we work really hard to know our students and understand them really well. So one of the things that we do is our director of SAS, Lizzie Rosen, puts together all the learning profiles for ninth grade students. So we know them that they come in with all of their um, all of their learning supports and all of their learning differences and all of the amazing qualities that they bring to the school um, initially from everything that we've collected. And we also really get to, so that's one way that we get to know them in the classroom, um, but we really work on designing a curriculum from the very beginning with orientation and with student life that give students opportunities to interact with each other in very organic and fun ways. Um, so whether that be orientation or student life activities where they're in various small groups where they can engage in non-academic manners. Um, those are just some of the ways that we do it. Great, thank you. Anything you'd like to add, Jackie? Yeah, hi, I'm Jackie McDonald. I'm the um, sophomore class dean. And we, at the beginning of the year, our theme for the whole year is working with or for others in the sophomore year. So we usually um, incorporate some element of community service into our orientation. Uh, we often serve at Cradles to Crayons, um, which is a local Boston organization. Um, this year we were unable to do that, but uh, we had many activities on campus. Uh, we talked about how we can continue to do community service within our own campus and within uh, social distancing. And we make sure that our new sophomores, which like Lisa said, is usually a group of 10 to, um, can be up to 10 to 15 new students, really get to know the campus and our, um, Returning students help lead um, tours around campus and activities and really help to integrate um, our new students throughout the fall. Great. Thank you, Casey and Jackie. Um, Mike, I may, may have you answer this next question just to kind of continue on that, just being part of the freshman team and, and um, the English department chair. Um, you know, through the advisory program and, and can you talk a little bit more about, you know, getting updates about about how your students and advisors are doing through the weekly progress reports. Um, as a faculty member, can you talk a little bit more about that relationship and how you can best support your students? Absolutely. So um, every week, um, I as an advisor have my set of four to five uh, students who are my advisees where we sit down and together we go through uh, weekly reports that they've gotten from their teachers about how things are going. And uh, one thing that I try to emphasize with them as an individual student is that this is a space where I am not sitting with them right now as their teacher, I'm there as their advisor and someone that they can sort of just talk about really how things are going um, academically or other factors, you know, that are going on with them because my job right there is to make sure that they're in a space where they are feeling supported, that they are feeling empowered, that they're feeling like they can start to advocate for themselves and get what they need. Uh, and so it's a lot of practice in learning to see for themselves how to see both um, what are the, what's the feedback they're receiving that they are proud of and they should be proud of and they should own with that pride and also taking that with what are the things to be aware of and how getting notes about things to be aware of and things to improve is not the same as saying, oh, you're doing terribly. It's not a statement on your value. It is how do you interpret that information constructively and see it for the support that it is. And then we talk about how we can use that to make plans. And um, with each student, it's finding, a, helping them make that progress to 
first see, okay, what is it that I would like help with? And then, okay, how am I comfortable asking for that help? And how am I comfortable receiving that help? And what am I willing to do? And gradually uh, growing more and more of that sense of advocacy and independence within them uh, to really help them feel empowered as a learner and as a human being. Great, thank you so much. Um, the next, we got a, a few questions um, and we will have a breakout room on our skills and academic support program. Um, but I thought we could maybe just address this question with the entire audience and then we can certainly um, go into more detail if you'd like to participate in the um, SAS um, breakout room. Um, so it was just what, what type of support can you provide for executive function uh, for a student with ADD, ADHD? Um, what types of hands-on support do you offer? Um, so maybe Lizzie, perhaps you could um, briefly address this question and then we can, like I said, certainly get into more um, detail and they have a little um, slide and presentation to prepare and then a Q&A for that breakout session. Um, but Lizzie, if you could, wouldn't mind, um, I think Lizzie's here. Um, briefly speaking to that, or I could have Maura. Uh, yeah, can I jump in? If mind? You... Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind at all, actually. I, I'm oddly passionate about teaching executive function, so I'd love to talk about it. Sure. Um, so my name is Maura Henry. I'm the Dean of Faculty. I teach skills and academic support, and uh, mostly for ninth grade. And so we just, we do direct instruction in terms of executive function. So we'll do a lot of uh, time management, a lot of uh, organization of materials, organization of time, organization of life, <laughs> uh, training right there in SAS class. And then all of that is supported in their uh, their regular uh, academic classes as well. So that um, we, you know, we're, we're building in scaffolds throughout the grades and, and lessening them as, as we go up, but the SAS support is always there so that you can have that full EF support grades nine through 12, and then it's uh, being supported in the classroom as well. Uh, ADHD is a super common uh, challenge that students have and we just help them to, to manage it to know themselves as a learner to know themselves um, as a human being and what they need um, I'm thinking of you know the, the extra challenge that it is right now with not you know uh, with COVID and so trying to keep six feet apart so we've got lots of outdoor space use happening and um, you know just uh, ke keeping students uh, moving forward recognizing their challenges, but, um, but not uh, being stopped by them. Great, thank and you. I, I'm psyched to talk about that more in the SAS breakout room. So come yes, on. Yes, they have a great, yeah. So Casey, Maura and Lizzie will, um, will be in that breakout room. So you have three faculty to speak um, further about that topic. Um, and just segue, I, we have our um, breakout rooms next, um, but I just wanted to address one, one final question um, and just start thinking about the breakout rooms you'd like to go to again, athletics, visual and performing arts or the skills and academic support program. Um, and so what I did want to mention that, you know, during the application process, we, we are looking at the whole student, you know, we're evaluating students from from every angle from from academic to a social emotional point of view, and how can they be positive members of our community. Um, but I would say one of the, the biggest things um, Josh spoke to earlier today is just being able to build relationships with the adults in their lives and our students who are able to collaborate with both the faculty and their and the peers, their peers really are um, ones that are just really able to dig in and have a lot of success here. Um, we also do accept um, a neuropsych report. So if students have um, testing within three years, um, we can certainly take that and evaluate um, a student because we are at the end of the day, a college prep school um, that has um, you know, really challenging courses, but we also have that layer of support through the SAS program. So I'm happy to speak with you directly if you have more um, questions about specific criteria. Um, so without further ado, and we're gonna have more time again for a student and parent panel. So there was plenty more time um, to ask more questions as well. Matt, so families have the option, right? To choose yes. their own breakout room. Yes, okay. uh, so yes, so, so faculty yes, so going in those rooms kind of go first. Mm -hmm. okay. Exactly, so yeah, so um, so in a second, you should see on your screen and it, it differs depending on what sort of device you're on, what version of Zoom you have, but you should see a notification that is allowing you to choose athletics, visual performing arts, or skills and academic support. And once you choose that, um, it, it does take a second. So the, the teachers that are leading that to, you know, it might be a, a little bit of transition time there. Um, but once you go there, then you'll be in that room. 
um, for about 20 minutes, and then we'll come back to the main room after that for the rest of the, the program. So after so that Matt, program, do we bring everybody back, back to the room or do they have to do it manually? They'll come back, they'll come back themselves. Themselves. It'll so count down and it'll bring, it'll bring everybody back. Yep. Okay. Okay. So you should see that option in just a minute. And um, for people who do not see that option, um, and All right, welcome back, everyone. All right, just going to take one more minute to have everybody return to us. Jamie and Becca and Maura, any of the faculty that did um, the breakout room, you're all set for the rest of the day. So thank you for thank you for helping and joining us, Ian. Thank you. Lizzie. Thank you. I hope you enjoy the rest of the day, everyone. Yes, have a good day, everybody. All right. I'm just telling faculty who were part of the breakout room. Everyone else stay, just the faculty who, who helped. We're back and we're back, Lisa. Back, okay, perfect. All right, um, so we're gonna just have a quick clip um, from our Director of College Counseling, Brooke Fink, and then we're gonna follow that up with a student and parent panel. So like before, you can begin uh, entering your questions in the chat and I'm making note of them now. So, all right, I'll read you Matt to, to launch the video. Hi, I'm Brooke Fink, Director of College Counseling at CHCH. Our individualized approach to post-secondary planning is centered on finding the best fit schools for our graduates. We are proud that 100% of our graduates are accepted to college, with over 80% enrolling in one of their top choice schools. With a focus on fit, our students identify the criteria that are important to them, going beyond the basics of size and location, and thinking about opportunities they want access to, and the culture and learning environment that will give them a balance of happiness and challenge. Last year, our students applied to over 200 colleges and universities. Brooke is um, amazing and um, such a great um, person to collaborate with and has um, our students can kind of speak to that or our parents. Um, so certainly we can you know, answer any questions to do with that. Um, so we have about 20 minutes for um, this next session. And I'm just gonna have our students introduce themselves first and then the parents who are helping out this afternoon. Um, so I'm gonna have the students go first and we're just gonna run through it quickly because we do have a, a pretty big um, group here. So Sonia, I'm gonna ask you to go first. Hi, my name is Sonia Gladstone. I'm a senior at Chapel Hill and I've been attending Chapel Hill since my freshman year and I am a boarding student. Great, thank you, Sonia. Uh, next up is Sophia. Hi guys, um, I'm Sophia. I live in Whalen, Massachusetts and I've been going to Chapel Hill since my sophomore year in high school and I'm a day student. Wonderful, thank you. Um, next up is Max. Hey guys, my name is Max Carvajal. I am a current senior at Chapel Hill. I have been attending Chapel Hill since my freshman year and I am a day student. Thanks, Max. Uh, next up is Axel. Hi, uh, I'm Axel. I'm a sophomore, and this is my second year. Okay, great. And where were you before this, Axel? Or Axel, yeah. Well, Axel um, transferred from to, or came to us from the Atrium School in Watertown. Um, okay, and then the next. I uh, I went to the Atrium School for middle school. Perfect. Thank you, Axel. Um, and next is Lulu. Hi, I'm Lulu McGee. I'm a junior and I transferred in February and so I'm starting my second year. Okay. So Lulu transferred in as a, a mid-year student. So I just wanna quickly make note of what that means. Um, so each year we've had um, students who weren't happy in their current 
situation, whether it's for a public school or just their current school isn't the right fit. And so we are able, if we're able to accommodate a schedule um, and a student is, is mission appropriate for us, then we're able to go through the application process for um, that current year. So for example, um, within the first week of school beginning, we had three students um, come to us and enrolled mid-year from public school because they just weren't um, happy being fully remote and, and really just thrive off the relationship and collaboration and, and we're seeking a smaller learning environment. Um, so if that's something you are interested in, I can certainly um, speak to you about that at any point. I'll put my email in the chat when, um, when we're finished up with, with this round. Um, Stephanie is going to be leading the student-led tour at the end of this, but I'm just gonna have Stephanie introduce herself as well. Hi, my name is Stephanie. I'm currently a senior and I'm a boarding student from New Jersey and I've been attending Chapel Hill since my freshman year. Great, thank you, Stephanie. Um, and then we have um, four fabulous parents helping us this afternoon. So I'm gonna ask um, Carrie to introduce herself first. Hi everyone, I'm Carrie Traub, my daughter. Um, she started last year as a freshman and we are from Medfield. Great, thank you. Up next is Jenny. Hi, I'm Jenny Sorblum. I'm Axel's mother, um, and we live in Sudbury, and um, he's been here since um, freshman year. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, and then up next is Karen. Hi, I'm Karen Fishman. My daughter, Daniela, is a senior, and she started freshman year. Great. And we live in Andover, and she commutes. Thank you. Um, and then Olga. Hi. Um, I'm Olga Brown. I'm mom of Maya Green, who's just started here in the 10th grade a couple of months ago, and it's been a wonderful two months. We live in Newton. She's a day student. And Renee, I am sorry. Sorry, you're not on my main screen and I forgot you. Uh, I forgot one of our awesome student helpers, Renee. Um, hi, my name is Renee. I'm a freshman and I'm a day student. Great. Thanks, Renee. All right. So um, feel free to put your questions in the chat for um, any questions you have from a student or a parent perspective, we have a couple um, here. Um, what is the social life, life like as a boarding student? And then I'm also gonna have the day students speak to that too because um, they get to participate in everything as well. So um, Stephanie, since you're an out-of-state boarding student and you've been here for four years, can you, can you speak to that? Um, for me personally, I felt very welcomed by the boarding community. I mean, like, once you move in, a bunch of girls are helping you, like the RAs, they help you bring your stuff upstairs. And I even had like boarders who had just moved in as freshmen help me. So like you really get to know your classmates in such close quarters. And all of the girls that I've met through the boarding program are like the closest friends I've made at Chapel Hill. Right. And Sonia, you're a day, well, sorry, you're a local boarder. So you live locally, but you um, chose to become a boarding student and live on campus. Do you want to speak to that as well? Yeah, so I'm a boarding student from Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, and I've been both a day and boarding student, so I can speak to both sides of it. And I think what's really unique about Chapel Hill is I do have students have the um, opportunity to board, even if that's locally. And I think, you know, boarding students, I usually stay, I usually um, go home on the weekends, but um, I am an RA, um, so a resident assistant in the lower classmen girls room this year. And we've been doing a lot of events, um, obviously through Zoom, to, you know, make that more community feeling, even though we are not like physically together in the dorms. Um, but Chapel Hill does make a really big effort to have boarders always be, you know, I wouldn't say occupied, but having the opportunity to do different activities. So we have a whole bunch of weekend activities that boarders can take part in as well as day students. Um, and I know weekly we have um, events as well. Great, thank you. Yeah, so I think that's one of the great things about CHCH um, that we're both a day in a boarding school. So even day students can take advantage of all of the boarding opportunities from weekend activities. Um, they can come early for breakfast, obviously lunch is included. They can stay for dinner after their activity. Um, and then they could even stay for study hall if they wanted to. So I think that's nice. And I think for parents too, um, just to kind of have those social things together. I see Carrie, you've shaken your head. Do you want to speak to that from a parent's perspective? Sure, um, it's great. I think that I, my daughter is a day student and she would um, come early because you know we had work schedules and carpool schedules and have breakfast. Um, and then uh, certainly like when theater is going late, they would have dinner. Um, I know that this year she was planning before COVID, she was planning on, because she's not an SAS this year, using the um, 
study hall at night to, you know, with her homework if she needed it. So it's just so nice having the flexibility and the options on the weekend to have that social time if, if, if your student wants to take advantage of it. And for um, day students, um, are you able to make close friendships with other students from school since everybody's from, you know, 30 plus mile radius from Waltham? Um, and, you know, are you friends with boarding students too? How is that collaboration? Yeah, so I can speak on this. So I am friends with um, boarding students and day students. And I feel like just because you're a boarding student and like a day student doesn't mean like, you know, you guys are like, you know, you guys, you know, can't be friends because you guys don't see each other a lot. Like I have friends with a lot of boarders. Um, I speak to them a lot during the day. And I think it's really great that, you know, I do sometimes participate in some of the events, um, boarding events on the weekends and um, some events like outside of school. Um, so. I can so yeah I, I definitely say that you know being I'm friends with day students and boarding students so right. and uh, co-curriculars after school are with everybody as well so um, everybody's here for a big part of the day um, does anyone else want to speak to that question before I go off to the next one any other parents or students want to anything to um, add I could speak to that if, sure, thank um, you Axel if possible mm -hmm. um, it's very easy for me at least to become friends with the boarders because we share so much time outside outside of the classroom together mm -hmm. and so you have lunch and dinner and sometimes breakfast with these people every day and so you get very close and uh, a close friend of mine is from vietnam another is from connecticut and it's just it just happens to work out like that and it mm -hmm. the school fosters community and mm -hmm. that's definitely apparent between the boarding and the day students. Thank you. Okay. Um, Matt, I'm gonna actually, at, at one point, um, is there, do you have a copy of the schedule? Yeah, and I keep going, I can, I can pull it up, yep. Can you queue one up? I'm gonna, act, yes, I'll, I'll let you know when, but there's some questions about the day and when it ends and starts and such. Yep. Um, Renee, I might have you ask this, uh, answer this question um, since you're, you're a freshman, but um, what advice could you give um, to an incoming freshman? Um, I would say don't be nervous. Everyone at CHCH is so friendly. Like, it's crazy. I'm friends with, I've been there for what, two months and I'm already friends with, well, obviously freshmen, but um, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. So there really is no like divide between the grades. So don't be nervous, talk to people. Um, CH just makes the transition so easy. Um, yeah. If, if I could add on to um, Renee's yes. point a little bit. So I actually just did this with Renee on Friday, um, but I started a program at Chapel Hill for um, just kind of mentoring. So last year I started in the, um, the spring when we were fully remote, just because obviously we were just seeing people from our classes. And um, so another senior, uh, now senior and I, um, created a program it's kind of a mentoring program for the freshmen as i said so we hold groups basically every friday it's been a little odd since you know we have all the college stuff so we've been able to do two this year and we're going to continue for the next couple of fridays um so it's again me and another senior and we talk to the freshmen about a lot of like getting acclimated and everything because you know it's really important to us as a school to have no divide and we don't but i think just especially this year since you know, it, it isn't a normal year um, to even make more of an effort of that from the upperclassmen side. Um, so, you know, everyone's so friendly, like Renee said, and I just wanted to echo that. Right, thank you. Uh, and Sophia, coming in as a, a sophomore um, and, and not being here for freshman year, is there anything you wanna to add to maybe someone who's looking to apply for 10th grade? Um, I definitely just say, um, like try and get yourself involved in as much as you can. My freshman or in my sophomore year, um, I joined three sports teams and I joined two different clubs. So the student tour guide club and also our students of color Alliance club. And I'd say like through soccer, which was the first season, like my first few months of being um, at Chapel Hill, I kind of like found my place in the community, like through those after school activities. So just like it's not like a situation where you really have to like work super hard to put yourself out there because everybody will kind of like draw to you. It's mm -hmm. a really like easygoing community. Um, so just like make an effort to like involve yourself and stuff like that. And like people will like gravitate towards you. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, and um, 
Stephanie, can you just um, give a few examples of weekend activities um, from last year? Obviously. Yeah, last year we actually did a lot of weekend activities that I liked. Um, we did sushi making and with Miss O'Brien, which is a teacher that was here earlier. We do like basketball clinics. So like some of the basketball coaches will set up like fun events in the gym to do. Um, we also do like movie trips. So my freshman year and sophomore year, I was really into going to the movies a lot. And every time there was a new movie, we'd ask the dorm parents to like take us out. Um, sometimes one year we did smoothie making, which was really fun. And like, mm -hmm. we basically can do anything that we ask the dorm parents and they're really up to it. Like I like cooking. So I always request like cooking activities and that's mm -hmm. like really fun for me. But if you're like into sports, they'll take you to the batting cages or like even sports games in Boston. So like, it's basically anything that you really want to do they're able to offer it to us. And Christine O'Brien, who joined us earlier um, for the panel, she oversees all the weekend activities. So, so she collaborates with the dorm parents who are in, on duty for that upcoming weekend, as well as the residential ass assistants, which are student leaders within each dorm to do um, weekend activity planning. Um, Sonia, this question was for you. What made you switch to boarding? Yeah, so that is a great question. I love answering that question. Um, so freshman year I started off as a day student um, but it was always kind of a like kind of a thought in the back of uh, my family and my head to you know transition to boarding I know that's a question we um, discussed with Mrs. Pellrine during my interview I remember that so vividly um, but we ended up deciding that 10th grade would be a good time um, to switch over to boarding just because the work did um, pick up a little bit and I've always struggled a little bit with time management and executive function. So the laid out time that I had for study hall um, has been honestly like life-changing. It's been so helpful for me to get my work done then. And, um, you know, again, I think it's also just a, a big community thing. It's, it's an awesome community to be at all the time. And, you know, coming in as a freshman, I never thought I'd say that, but you know, it is the truth and it's such a good place to be. Thank you. This next question is for Lulu. Um, as you transferred in mid-year, how was the transition for you? And what did CHCH do to get you up to speed? And, and how did the other students help you get involved? Okay, so I transferred in February. So I kind of came right at the tail end of the winter um, trimester and then kind of went right into remote. But the school did a really great job making sure that people knew who I was. Um, there was one girl who was in a lot of my classes and she kind of helped me like find my way around the school. Um, I also developed a really good relationship with a couple of my teachers that helped me a lot. So I think the school did a really good job of just acclimating whether you're coming in the beginning of the year or in the middle of the year, they make sure that you have a good transition. Great, thank you. Um, for the parents, uh, how, how does it work with the commute and other opportunities for carpools? Like I know, Karen, you come from Andover, Jenny, Olga, like any, does anyone wanna? I'm happy to talk about that. Yeah. Um, we, we live in Newton, so it's not a big commute, but it would be, not, you know, we thought it would be nice to find someone else. Uh, there was ex extremely fast um, communication between parents when the information was shared. Um, and from day one, basically, um, Maya and um, uh, so Maya is a new sophomore and she's um, carpooling with a freshman. Mm -hmm. And that also you know, creates a lot of cross uh, communication between people and groups and getting to know other kids. So it's, it's working really well. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to actually say one more thing. Sure. Um, you know, it's interesting to hear the kids who've been at um, CHCH for a few years, because as a new parent, all of the activities that are done throughout the normal year are not necessarily available in the evenings and mm -hmm. uh, boarding, et cetera. But even with that, there's been an incredible, in, in two months, there's been, been the kids are really held really warmly and there's a, a lot of camaraderie and it's you know visible as a brand new student or a parent of a brand new student so great thanks Olga Karen is there anything you wanted to add um I think just the only thing I would add we had a similar experience is um, we carpooled for the first three years 
and um, the list through the admissions office was very helpful to um, that you all were sending out um, to um, help us strategize and reach out and connect with other people in the community who could be potential options to carpool with. And I think um, especially Daniela's freshman year, it was wonderful for us and for her to um, carpool with upperclassmen. Mm -hmm. And um, that gave her another layer of support in the community and entree into the community. Mm -hmm. And um, it, was just, it was just a wonderful experience. Mm -hmm. And it helped to yeah. carpool. Exactly. <laughs> Give you a break. Um, Matt, do you mind just sharing your screen really quick? I just want to highlight the schedule again, just to show when, when classes begin, when the day ends, and how co-curriculars work within that. So here, here's our schedule. So each, each day begins at 8 a.m. except for Wednesdays. We do have a little bit of a later start at 9.05. However, our dining hall does open about an hour earlier. So for those parents that need to get to work or do other drop-offs, um, there's a a place for students to grab a bite to eat and just kind of hang out with their friends before they have to get off to their um, their first period class. Um, so on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, our students have four classes. So the day ends at three o'clock. And on Wednesdays and Fridays, um, the day ends at either um, 2.45 or 2.15. And so they do have about a half hour when classes end and then um, go off to their co-curricular. So again, co-curriculars are um, something that we ask all of our students to participate in Monday through Friday for about an hour and a half to two hours, depending on what um, your student participates in. If it's, a, if it's a sport, then we typically have games on Wednesdays and Fridays when it's a bit of an earlier day. Um, lunch, I'm sorry. Well, obviously lunch is included, but dinner is from 5.30 to 6.30. Um, so students can stay um, for dinner and get picked up after. And if parents are stuck in traffic or have another commitment, then they could always participate in, in the evening study hall, which runs from 7.30 to 9.30, even if they wanted to do the first you know, 45 minutes or so. So there's always a, a place for our day students to go. It's, um, you know, we basically just ask them to leave campus when it's um, time for our boarding students to be in the dorm and check in at 9.30. All right, thanks, Matt. Um, and then, sorry, I just answered that. I'm just going through. Um, and then, if um, if maybe um, Jenny, if you want to talk, and then maybe have the students um, speak to this as well. Just kind of, there are so many independent schools in the Boston area. Um, you know, how did you approach your search, and kind of what what stood out to you um, about CHCH? Yeah. Um, so. Axel, um, and we've three children, and um, Axel's the only one at um, CHCH, but um, they all went to independent schools since kindergarten. And um, so we looked a lot. And um, for Axel, we were looking specifically for um, a school that that had the support that he needed for his learning differences, but also um, just because of the kind of person Axel is, a really academic place, a, a true prep school. And we were having a lot of trouble finding um, a school that wasn't all support or all prep school. Mm -hmm. And um, there weren't too many in between. So we, that really appealed to us. And that, that really has been the case for us. We, we, um, uh, so last year, Axel had um, the academic support for freshman year. And it, it was incredibly helpful to have that along with classes that were, weren't um, catering to kids that were all, that needed needed support completely um and so then th this year that that support was so helpful that this year um he doesn't need that and that space in his schedule opened up um to all these new classes and and time in his his schedule so the um the individuality in the scheduling and in in what what each kid needs has been so um so great for us we've really really liked that a lot um and and when we were looking at the school that's that's what appealed to us too we were hoping that it wasn't just on paper and it has been the case that that's what we were looking for that's what we found mm -hmm. so we've been super pleased with that great Thank you. I know we're getting short on on time. I just wanted to cover a couple of different questions here. Um, and Lance, remind me how many of our staff live on our faculty and staff live on campus? That was one of the questions for the dorm. Yeah, period. we have about about 35 um, of our faculty and staff that live on campus and there are 70 employees of the school. 
Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and then are there other opportunities as far as clubs for um, students of color or students interested um, in LGBTQ? Do one of our students want to answer? Axel, do you want um, to answer? I know you're the, the, there's this there's two clubs that cater to these two like things there's mm -hmm. soca or open spaces for students of color and students who are members of the lgbtq plus community to mm -hmm. come and find like a safe space and uh, a space to just talk do activities um we plan event both the clubs plan events and it's a very welcoming environment and it's very fun great thank you um and then um the question um, for for them uh, for Lulu just to how you got caught up on um, the academics. I'm going to actually have um, that parent who answered asked that question. If you could email me, um, and then I can put you in touch with Lulu and give you her contact information. Um, that would be great. And then um, and then what else do we have? And then the independent study. Um, Sonia is actually doing one. Sonia, do you want to just speak briefly to that? Yeah, absolutely. So last winter, um, you know, college search started, you know, college was introduced and um, I have always wanted to work in healthcare. Um, not sure which one, but that's, you know, different story, but I was able to do an independent study with our athletic trainer and um, shadow her and, you know, just help her with basic things. Um, I was able to get re CPR for state Navy certified and kind of followed her around. So there are so many opportunities for that, not just that, but just in general. Um, yeah. Okay, great. And we have um, amazing information on our website due to um, COVID and how we are dealing with that and approaching that. Um, Lance, do you mind putting in the chat the, the link to that? Um, Lance um, did a, a lot of work with this with the administrative team and we have several documents and videos um, available on, on our approach to um, in the classroom, outside of the classroom, how we're approaching our co-curriculars. Um, that's a pretty lengthy um, answer to that question. So I just want to make sure that everybody knows that that's uh, available um, to you in the link there. Um, and then the last question I'm just going to cover really quick, maybe Sonia, I'm sorry, Sophia, you could answer this, your, um, your commitment as far as um, being an athlete and how do you get all of your work done? And what is your activity or activities off season? So I'm a three season athlete at Chapel Hill. Um, I play soccer pretty competitively. So I've also been playing on a club indoor soccer team. Um, so that happened during the winter. I can like speak on that because I also was doing basketball at the same time. So I would go from basketball practice right to my soccer practice. Um, and I found that in terms of like the workload, the teachers are very like willing to give you time in class since the block times are so much longer. Um, they're 75 minutes. so. I found that the majority of my homework was actually getting done during the day. Um, I also utilized my office hours. So by the time I got home from my after school activity, which was basketball and soccer, um, I think I had maybe at most 45 minutes of homework. Um, the commitment to the sports at CHCH are, we do have practice or game every single day. This year it's just been practice. Um, but I don't think it's that hard of a commitment just because we do practice right after school. So it's not like we have a bunch of waiting time in between. So it's pretty manageable. Um, but yeah. Okay, great. Thank you for all your wonderful questions. And if um, there may be there, I think there were a few I couldn't specifically get to, but I did put my email um, in the chat. And so please feel free to um, reach out. We are doing uh, on-campus tours and interviews at this point. Um, we are open. Um, we are teaching five days a week in person. Um, for those students who are remote, they have a chance to do synchronous learning as well as our international students asynchronous. Um, so we are doing tours and interviews um, at a safe distance, one family at a time on campus. And so if you are interested, we are booking those um, Monday through Friday during the academic day. Um, Caroline Finnamore, who is on my team, if you wanna give a quick wave, Caroline, um, can certainly assist you with that. And there are also booking options on our website as well for you to choose um, a date and time that work for you. For those uncomfortable with that, we are 
very happy to do a virtual tour led by one of our current students and the interview that way. There is no preference on our end, whatever's most comfortable for you. Um, before we go 